Good morning and welcome. Before we begin, we pay our respects to the traditional custodians of this place, the Jarawea and Gaibal people. And we join with the Uniting Church all across Australia in a covenant with Indigenous people and with an agreement to live with respect for their elders, past, present and emerging. And as people of faith, we do this as an expression of the reconciliation which Christ calls us to. Let's stand and praise God with the beautiful song that talks about 10,000 reasons and more to give our thanks and praise to the God who has called us into being. Let's stand and sing together.
Well, welcome on this beautiful summer morning and a special welcome to those who are joining us online. Well, today we enter the story of Jesus' baptism in the River Jordan. And we hear how when Jesus emerges from the waters of baptism, he hears the truth of his identity. You are beloved. You are a beloved child of God. And do you know that's the truth of each one of us? It's the identity of every person. You are a beloved child of God. And while baptism might mark the beginning in the Christian journey, we are beloved children of God, whether we are baptised or not. Linda, it's going to lead us into worship. Please, please share in the responses on the screen. When we are reluctant to dip our toes into faith's river. When we are hesitant to cup our hands to drink from the fountain of grace. When we are unwilling to be the pipeline of hope. Come, let us worship. And we're going to sing. We're going to sing The River Is Here. So please stand if you are able and join in. I'm wondering if the children and some mums or dads would like to come and have a look at this river that we've got here today. We made it out of Patrick's sandpit, didn't we? And some, the blue cloth is meant to be the water running down and 
in Patrick's sandpit, we've got some water. And I'm wondering if you would each like to add some more water. Can I give you a cup of water to pour in to our river? Would you like to pour that into the river? Or Eleanor's ready to pour her cup in the river. Here we are. Oh, and so's Caleb. Here we are. Oh, what else have we got? Here we are. We we'll pour it all in. Here we are. Let's pour it in. I'm going to pour a bit in. Oh, there it goes. Oh, in it goes. Hey, look. Chris is putting some in for Patrick. And I'm putting a bit in too. Ah. Can you tell which bit? Caleb, can you see your piece of water that you put in? Or Eleanor's? Or mine? Or Patrick's? They're all mixed in together, aren't they? And do you know what? Today, we're going to talk about when Jesus got baptised in the river and how we can be baptised too. Can you remember when Eleanor got baptised? Yeah. And that's something we do to show that we're joining in the church. Now, I've got some things here that you can play with with the water and Linda's going to tell us the story of Jesus getting baptised and watch out because do you know what? Linda's taken her shoes off. I think she's going to get in the water. Let's see. <laughs> Okay, so one day, long, long ago, John went to the Jordan River. John walked into the river. <laughs> the water covered his feet. The water covered his knees. John stood in the water and called out to the people who were standing beside the river. Come, John called to the people, come into the water and be baptised. Soon the people came. They came from their houses. They came from the hills and fields. People came from everywhere. There were so many people that wanted to hear about God. They were ready to change and live God's way of love and peace. They were ready to be baptised. And so the people stood in the river with John. And one by one, John dipped them in the river and said a prayer. So have you guys been touching the water? You could touch the water like the people were in the story. Eleanor's having a good time in there in the water. <laughs> You're the water baby. <laughs> anyway, John said to the people, now you are baptised. Go and live God's way. And as the people left, they felt clean and new inside. It was a wonderful feeling. Now near the end of the day, John looked up and saw a man standing beside the river. The person looked very familiar. It was Jesus. Jesus was the special one sent by God. John called Jesus, please baptise me. No, no, said John. You should be baptising me instead. No, John, said Jesus. This is what God wants. God wants you to baptise me. So Jesus walked out into the river. Jesus and John smiled at each other. John said a prayer to God then dipped Jesus under the water and lifted Jesus up again. And then 
something wonderful happened. As Jesus came out of the water, Jesus felt God's love in a very special way. Jesus heard God say, you are loved by God. I am so pleased with you. And then looking up, Jesus saw light all around. It looked like a dove was gently touching him. John was happy that, Je that he had baptised Jesus. John knew that he had done what God wanted. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, my leg has been baptised. <laughs> hey, and, and mums and dads, don't worry about any water on the carpet because we've got a, um, a carpet shampooing machine that will suck all the water out, okay? So don't, don't be afraid of, of that. So Jesus heard that message. You are God's beloved child. I still remember the day when I went on a retreat. I was early on in my mature Christian journey because I'd had to start again as an adult, even though I had begun it as a child and a teenager. I had, uh, I had lost my way. So I began the journey again. And along the way in life, I had taken on a message that I was not beloved. And then when I was at this retreat in Alice Springs, I had a, a time when each of us had the opportunity to come and uh, light a candle at the foot of a cross. And as I knelt down to light my candle, it dawned on me. It became real for me again that I truly was a beloved child of God. It was a life-changing moment. Perhaps the sort of moment that we would call a born-again moment. And I don't think I'm alone in taking on messages as I went through life which made me doubt that I was a beloved child of God, made me doubt that I was worthy of love at all. And to know again, deep in my heart, that my true identity was as a beloved child of God was an unforgettable moment. A moment which each one of us needs in some way. There's a little boy who's very dear to me. And uh, two years ago, he was really struggling at school. He had some difficulties that uh, were not yet recognised. And he found that he just couldn't learn to read and write. And unfortunately, the teacher that he had was not sensitive to what this meant for him and was not putting in the extra effort that he required. And he said to me towards the end of that school year, you know, I think I might be a stupid boy. And my heart 
broke as I saw the look in his eyes as he called himself a stupid boy. And I realised that even at the tender age of seven, it's possible to take in messages about ourselves which do untold damage. That night at bedtime, we talked further about how this little boy felt about himself. I talked to him about the fact that many people struggle in one way or another with academic issues. But for him, he just felt that he was worthless. And what really alarmed me is that he started to talk about being better off dead. He wanted to know what it was like to die and would it be easy to die. And I was horrified that a little boy of seven would be thinking in this way. And I talked to him about all the wonderful things ahead for him in life. And the things that he might miss out on. And I talked to him about one day finding somebody that he really loved and who really loved him. And what a great joy that would be in his life. And he would need to be grown up for that to happen. And he said to me, oh, I don't think anybody would ever love me. And I knew then how serious this situation was. And I could relate really deeply to the fact that he had taken on a deep message that he was of no worth. I spoke to his parents. Don't worry, too, don't, don't worry too much, Lisa. Whatever happens, we can clean it up. <laughs> we can clean it up. And anyway, when I spoke to his parents, they decided that they would, they would pull him out of that school and send him to another school. And at the, at the new school, within a week, uh, the people had, the staff had recognised that this little boy had some special needs. He started to have um, uh, individual classes every afternoon for literacy. And he started to make progress quite quickly. But more than that, at this new school, the principal stood at the gate every morning and every afternoon as the children arrived and as the children left. Within a week, that principal had learnt the name of every one of the new children who had started that year. And every afternoon, that principal would check in with each child by name and say, how has your day been? What's been the best thing about today? And my little friend very often would say, oh, the best thing today was lunchtime <laughs> because that was the best thing for him. But gradually, that internal message of not being worthy started to be reshaped. Now, I spent some time with this same little boy recently, and he showed me something that was given to him at the end of the school year. Within two years now, he's reading quite well. But the most important thing to him from the whole school year was this card that his teachers had made. And the teachers had gone around the class, there were two teachers, obviously a, a, a shared classroom, and they'd interviewed every child and asked them to name 
a special quality for each of the children in the class. And then the teachers had gathered those words together for each child. And for my particular little friend, they'd put those words together in sort of a, 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 a happy face shape. And the words on it were thoughtful, friendly, athletic, kind, funny. And they'd made a pattern with these words describing my little friend. And then on the back of the card, they'd written, Dear, and his name, we have loved having you in our class this year. And we want you to never forget how clever you are. And when my little friend came and showed me this card as his most treasured result of the year, I knew that he was receiving a resounding message from this school, which is a Christian school, that you are a beloved child of God. And that dark abyss that had been opening up in him as he was experiencing failure and falling through the cracks in the previous school, that abyss was becoming healed and he was gradually developing a sense of himself as worthy, as valuable, just as he was. My encounter with my little friend just before Christmas was actually the highlight for me of the whole Christmas season. It reminded me of the experience I had had at that retreat where my own sense of unworthiness was healed by the knowledge that I was a beloved child of God. And the wonderful thing is that that truth applies to every person and each one of us here. When you arrived, um, you should have received a, a, a little clipboard with a piece of paper on it and a texter. And I'm going to ask you now to use the paper and the texter to think about the way that you are a beloved child of God. So just settle yourself for a moment and think of how God spoke to Jesus at his baptism. And as you settle yourself, Get ready to listen to the way that God speaks to you. Linda, I'm just wondering if I can bother you as the, as the elder. I, I can see a few people who haven't got a clipboard. I'm wondering if you could um, uh, make sure that they have one. And what I'm going to ask you to do is to write your name on the top of the piece of paper and then draw a shape or a line or a doodle around it. And in that doodle, write the name that you can hear God calling you. And then draw another shape below it. And the shape below it is a prayer space. Listen again. Who does God say you are? Listen 
for the qualities God sees in you. And as you write these qualities that you know God has placed in you, draw a circle or a shape or a heart, a heart around each of those qualities, each of those names that God has for you. And connect these qualities and make it a prayer of the hope and possibility that God has planted in you. We're going to listen um, to some uh, lovely music playing as we do this. Um, uh, uh, it's a David McGregor song, God of life and of living water. And as we listen, get in touch with that living water which God has placed in you and name the life-giving qualities that are part of who you are. Let's do it. So I invite you to hold that piece of paper before you. 
And we're going to have a time of prayer now where we're going to uh, sing the refrain, Behold, behold, I make all things new. And as you, as you hold before you uh, the picture of yourself as a beloved child of God, may you know the healing power, the renewing power of Christ who is the way. So we're going to sing it through uh, once to start off with and then Linda's going to lead us in prayer and we're going to remain seated. God calls us to the water to find a new way, a new grace, a new hope, a new faith, a new life. Come to the water and let go of the worn out, worn out habits, worn out pains, worn out angers, worn out burdens. God blesses the water and it heals us, cleans us, renews us, refreshes us. Come to the water and receive blessing, freedom, mercy, love. Gracious God, your spirit moved over the formless waters to bring forth the cosmos. Your spirit moves in the waters of the womb to bring forth life. Your spirit rains and pours and floods in rivers and oceans and veins, cleansing, purifying and anointing all of creation. So we ask that you would bless this water here today. 
both that which is in the pool and that which is on the carpet. <laughs> and that you would bless us with your presence. And now we're going to do something that we do at the beginning of each year. And it's an ancient Christian custom. And it's called a spurging. And it's something that the Anglican Church still does. And the Uniting Church is rediscovering. And I'm going to sprinkle you with water from this branch as a sign of your baptism and as a sign that God has created you and named you beloved. And we always choose to do this on a nice hot summer day. <laughs> God has created you and named you beloved, that you may live for God. Gotcha. Here we are. More water. Can you make it wet again? Pour, pour some more water on it. Make it nice and wet. That's the way. All right. We're going to do some more. I, I might do you before I go anywhere. Here we are. Look. God has created you and Named you beloved. God has created you and named you beloved. Oh, I'm worried about the piano. <laughs> God has created you and named you beloved. Oh, here we are. Can make it wet again for me? Oh, a bit more water. There we are. Oh, the jug's a good idea. Can you pour the jug of water on the on the branch? That's the way. Oh, it's nice and wet. Oh, thank you, helpers. Okay. God has created you and named you beloved. You are the beloved children of God. God has created you and named you beloved. Last little bit. Here we are. Can you put a little bit more water on the branch? Oh, that's lovely. Yes, a bit more. Oh, there we are. Okay. God has created you and named you beloved that you may live for God. You are God's beloved child. You ready, Russell? There we are. You are God's beloved child. There we are. And a little bit more. Is that, did I get, oh, here we are. You're just in time. God has created you and named you a beloved child. There we are. So now let's celebrate that blessing that comes to us, that meets us where we are and calls us on into fullness of life. Let's stand together and sing Spirit of Gentleness.
So now we come to a time of, of any announcements um, that we need to share for our life together. Uh, we haven't got uh, uh, newsletters at the moment. Uh, the Christmas one uh, is extending right through till the 18th of January until uh, Margaret is uh, uh, back in the office. Uh, I guess... I would want to say on behalf of, uh, of Flo and Liz what a wonderful night it was last night. Uh, many people rocked up to celebrate Liz's 80th birthday and uh, it was very enjoyable. So thank you, Flo and Liz, for your hospitality and for the sharing of some of your story last night. It was great. Is there anything else that needs to be shared? Anything starting up that uh, has previously had a holiday? Are, are we doing Tuesday morning prayer again this Tuesday, Kay, or not yet? No, not, not yet, okay, that's all right. I love this time early in January when uh, it feels like time and obligations have been suspended for a while. Is there anything that anybody else needs to mention? No? Well, let us, let us move now um, to our time of offering, recognising that uh, uh, many of us make a digital offering, uh, whether we do that as a regular um, uh, online debit or whether we uh, uh, use our phones to, to use the QR, card, QR code, uh, which uh, is, is in the newsletter. Um, so please, as we make an opportunity for a physical offering as well, um, please don't be embarrassed because we recognise that there are many forms that our offering for the life of this congregation takes. I invite you to remain seated during the offering as we sing the song, Christ Be Our Light.
You know, I didn't realise until we were singing it today that that song is a perfect offering prayer, isn't it? Asking that the gifts we give will be taken and used as light in the suffering world. So I'm going to um, skip past the offering prayer that I wrote because I think we've already sung it. And I'm going to say, go now, beloved people, to follow God's way of love, to be surprised by God's wonder in the world and to live your life with compassion. And may you feel God's encouragement in each new day and know that you are never, ever alone. We're going to sing uh, a blessing song uh, to, f- to finish. We're going to sing it through twice. It's one that you might be familiar with or not, but uh, I invite you to do that thing that we do, to look around at each other and sing it as a blessing to each other. Let's stand. Um, to to turn around and to greet those around you, invite them to come and uh, have morning tea with you. Thank you.